guys, welcome back. I'm gonna make a uh, creeper style lure using these wings I picked up a few a few videos ago. You're probably gonna head for something not real sure on the size yet. Uh, go by eye when I start drawing stuff up and I'll put the wings on there and see what I feel is correct to suit these wings. So the piece of wood I'm using I have no idea what it is and got it given to me by a bloke he said he's got this he didn't know what it was so he wasn't too too keen on using it can't really see the end grain on the on the camera but it's very light it's um it's gravity i think it was 0.41 so it's very similar to the moranti could quite possibly be moranti but it just doesn't look like it. So yeah, we're going to be using that. It's probably about 50 by 50. So it's about 40, we'll call it 45 by 45 mil. I probably won't be using the whole width of it, but I am going to going to aim for a bit of a chunky, chunky lure on this one. I'm going to keep it short and fat. Yeah, all right, let's draw her up. All right, just mark the center. What am I thinking here? I might keep it, I might keep it more flat across the body rather than being long and skinny tall so I might draw the top profile first <clears throat> give it something like that for a top profile real wide especially right up near where the wings are and I'll put the lure at 36 millimeters wide I'll put a bit of a cupped face on it too it's obviously going to be surface lure, so. Yeah, I'm going to get some paper and trace that and duplicate it onto the other side. Oh, still learning how this camera works. Apparently, the screens go off after a bit to save power while you're recording. I thought it stopped. So. That was the uh, original lead on the on the block. I just set the paper over it, scribbled over it, and you get a, a faint outline of your your original. Just give her a fold across that center line, and you cut out your your outline. Uh, Tracy one of the block. Top profile, short, chunky one. I think I might wait until after I've got a cut to work out the side profile. I did actually just think about something before we cut. I need to work out where that eye's gonna go. Probably end up putting maybe six millimeter glass eye in this thing, maybe. What sort of side profile do I want? Keep it pretty, pretty short, I think. A bit like that. When does that correlate with the wing position? That eye up a bit. That will work. 
Actually, let's trace her on now. I'll check pilot holes with the wings and the eye go, just so everything lines up straight on the other side. With the wing, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it there. So that front hole's on the center line that I drew. That one's just above, so the wings are slightly angled forwards. Don't know if that's the right way to do it. I've never made a, a winged lure, but that's how I'm doing it. All right, I'm just gonna do the pilot holes, then I'll jump on the saw and cut it out, and we'll get back to the table. trick that Zimtex uses and hot glue these sections back on just make it easier to cut Sand of those lines and then we'll pull it apart. She's definitely a fat boy. Alright, so apparently the trick is you get some isopropyl alcohol in there and it dissolves that hot melt glue. We'll see how true that is, whether it comes apart or not. That's so just standard isopropyl. The soaking. And there we go. Peeled straight off. Who'd have thunk it? Never tried that before could come quite handy. Alright, chuck him back on the sander and sand to that and we'll see what it looks like. See if I'm happy with it. Probably won't bring these along this time, it's just sanding, it's not real fun. Alrighty, that's the shape, straighten up a bit, so he's going to have the big pretty square head on him but doesn't matter, surface lure, the fish only see the underside of him, unless they're hooked up, and they see my ugly face. So I'm thinking... I'm going to try and put some sort of recess in here as a mouth. So come down to a point. May or may not look stupid, but we'll see what happens. These little eye sockets. I want to say six mil, six mil glass eye. So I'll drill them out, then we'll draw some chamfer lines and start hand carving. What do you think so far? It's going to be a, a chunky little thing. So 
So the side chamfer line is going to be pretty small. Don't want to take too much real estate off the side of him. Come all the way around to that mouth. So it sort of meets up with that bottom lip. And do the same on the top, except I'm going to stop just here above the eye. It's obviously still going to be rounded over a little bit, but most of that's going to be pretty square. There. I'm pretty sure this wood is Morantia. Eh? Look at the grain in it now. I'll get another piece of Morantia and I'll put it side by side to show you this. What do you reckon? A very similar structure. Looks totally different that way though. There's no lateral grain in this one. Going that way. Shit load of it that way. Very odd. Alright, so how far across do we want to bring his big wolf head? Around him right over to the tail. And we'll do the same on the belly. Right to the tail. Let's cover up. This is just your most cheapest basic knife. <clears throat> as long as it's sharp, that's all you really need. Chuck him in the vise and give him a sand. See what our shape's going to look like. This is just 180 grit emery cloth. the most tedious part and sand I don't mind it really to be honest with you so that's literally where we're at right now out of the vise little open mouth real fat across the head I'll give it a hand sand and I'll probably put these wings on it and put the hook hangers in it and see what she looks like I'd turn that fan on it's getting way too hot in here Real muggy and sweaty, stormy sort of weather. We had a massive storm come through here on Christmas Day. Caused big messes. Some people still haven't got power now, and it's what, 30th? Five days later. There's trees down everywhere, power lines down everywhere. And I didn't have power for two days. 
the generator up to keep the fridge cold, keep the food safe, that was about it. No aircon, no TV. No YouTube. Only sanding down to 240 grit. This one's going to be getting a polyurethane bath as long as it hasn't dried up. No, it's a water based poly. So I'll go down to 240, just probably give it two coats of that. I'm not carving gills or anything. Probably two coats of that, maybe three coats depending on how it looks. Just give it a nice smooth base to paint on tomorrow. hardware in him. Okay, two short ones, one long one in the tail. Just for a bit of strength where it's a bit, a bit thinner in the wood. on her. For the wings I'm going to have to modify that base plate a little bit and then still make sure they work. They'll be coming back off before I put the poly on. Let's use my rod that I used to put the screw eyes in. Let's give it a gentle bend. A little bit more on this end. Good. <clears throat> Pretty stoked with the the positioning on that, that's I'd say bang on perfect. I was a bit worried drilling through that thick block of wood right at the start because the um, drill bit I was using was so thin I was worried it was going to bend on the way in and skew. But it looks like it done pretty well. Right. Still just sitting on there loose but Pretty cool. His wings fold up nice and flush with his body. So he should sail through the air like a little rocket. Pretty happy with how that come out. Those screws stick out just far enough that it's going to stop those wings hitting those glass eyes. I was a bit worried about that, but that looks good. Noisy little bugger. I'm going to seal him up and when I come back tomorrow I'm going to check, make sure he floats right with all this weight of these wings. I don't want him to sit crooked. If he does, I'll put a bit of belly weight in him, but if he sits right, there's not going to be nothing. No need for belly weight, but we'll see how he sits. Alright, I'll get these wings back off. I'll put some poly on him. Go to see you guys tomorrow. You don't really want to see me. Alright, fair enough. You can watch me do it. I'll get these wings off and we'll put some poly on him. Just gonna brush it on. 
Actually, I might dip it on. It looks like it'll fit in there. See what to glue these eyelets into. Literally just gonna screw them back. Put some uh, medium black super glue on it. Starve on medium. Too much super glue in there and it's just forcing it up out through the grain. Can't say I've had that happen before. Cover thing clear is a water based polyurethane. A couple of lumps in it. If I get lumps, I'll brush them off. I'll have to go upside down first. It's going to be too long. Alright, so that is a couple of coats of poly last night, it's come up pretty smooth except for where that glue was leaking out, it's got a little bit of a ripple but you won't worry about that too much. So I'll just put the wings back on him to see how he sits in the water. He does roll to the side, but obviously when he rolls to the side this wing folds in which makes him roll further to the side. And I've just checked him with weight, if I tail weight him enough to make him sit flat he sinks. So I'm just going to leave it as is and just see how he rolls. I dare say once you get a bit of movement and he starts doing his paddling action, it's not going to matter. He'll just sit funny when he's stopped. He'll sit in the water like that. Anyway, I'm going to get these wings off, give him a sand and we'll, we'll get some paint on it. So we've got a new toy to play with. One of those vinyl cutters, you might have seen the sticker I got on my desk in the yellow and the t-shirt I had on yesterday so I've just been playing around with that so I'm going to keep this lure fairly basic and I'm going to stick these down his spine see how he looks just a little holographic vinyl I'll clear coat over that obviously but well, I'll rip these wings off and I'll go back to you in a sec alright guys here we are Put the wings off, give them a rough sand. Just give it a quick wipe with isopropyl, make sure there's no sanding dust on it anymore. So, it's going to be a pretty basic one because I'm putting that holographic colour on the, on the back. So I'm just going to hit her all over with the wicked opaque white. I'm going to come back with the wicked pearl white all over the whole everything and put a pattern on his back just down the middle using that mesh and wicked pearl black over the pearl black I'm going to put a slight spray of purple color shift straight down the center might do a little bit around his eyes probably do a red mouth but 
have a look. I'm going to do the eyes with this green color shift from the inside. Then I'm going to put a holographic foil behind that. So we'll start with the white base coat. pearl white practically can't see pearl white on the camera so you guys probably won't see much all right while we're waiting for that pearl white to set up we're going to hit the eyes with this color shift green i just think that color shift green might suit the holographic colors quite well but i've got those eyes So I already stuck them onto a bit of wood, just holding them on there with a bit of blue sticky tape. I've already put a black pupil into them. Alright, that'll do them. So let's put some mesh down his back. So it's on there nice and tight. So I'm just going to focus that black down the center. The overspray will obviously go out to the shoulders. It's wicked pearl black. All right. <clears throat> Color shift extreme, abyss. It's that purple to gold. What does it say? Deep purple, blue, orange, gold. Sticky. Looks pretty cool. Purple in the middle, fade in the black. I'm going to put a touch of touch of black around his eyes and on his on his lip there. And we'll come back with red on a brush, I believe. Darken up around his eyes. I'm going to have his top lip some black. I'm going to get a brush out and try and paint his mouth. I'll give that a try. <laughs> Looks pretty average, but should do the job. Detail carmine. Gonna give it a quick squirt of this 4050 polyurethane before I go and stick that sticker onto it and then put the eyes into it. Giving that poly quite a bit of time to, to cure up, set up. So I've just made a little, we'll call it a nest out of a rag. Lay this guy onto so I can get this sticker on straight. I haven't tried to get this off the paper yet, hopefully it comes off easy. Tried to stick all the, the fragile bits down so all the little bits out here are all stuck together and then the center lines all stuck together. I'll get back to this after I stuff around with this and get it off. I got her off, it's not 100% not neat but hopefully we can straighten that after we lay it down. Stick it down where it is. I'll just start wrapping these around. Fragile process. Uh oh, it's 
Transfer types peeling up me, me paint. No way around that. Concerned about the one on the back now. Ah! Look at that shit. I'm in a world of trouble getting that one off the spine. Because so I pushed it down real hard to make sure it was stuck. That's super annoying. Touching this lure a lot more than I'd like to. But without touching it, that shit's not going to stick. If I do it again, I'm definitely going to put a clear coat on first. I thought spraying that polyurethane might have stopped that, but obviously not. It looks pretty funky though. Yeah, right. I might see what I can do to fix that. Still gonna work, just doesn't look cool. I've fixed up those paint chips the best I can. Hard to see at the moment, but that was one of them. There's another one on the other side, but it's going to be under the wing, so I'm going to leave it. Let's glean some eyes. Five minute epoxy. So I've got the domes, I've got the holographics prepped up, ready to go. I'll give that time to set up and I'll get some clear coat on her. Alright, here we are. I'll get some clear coat on him and get him spinning. The eyes are in. Holographics are all on the back. That was a, a bigger job than I thought it was going to be. Well, at least I know for next time if I do it again. Now, shove some clear on him. I hope this holographics doesn't react with the clear coat. Didn't think about that. Should be fine. It's going to be interesting to see how this one comes out because I've had my fingers all over it. And get him turning. Alright guys, that's her. She'll put together. Unfortunately, we're going to have to throw it in the dam outside today. It's been raining non-stop for like two days. All the systems are all flooded, so I'm not going to get a chance to go and fish this one, unfortunately. I'll take his for a walk around there and we'll throw her in the water and see how she works.
cast well. Alright, he just got back from the swim test then. Thing casts pretty well. It's pretty heavy. So I'll go and get the scales. I'll throw it on the scales. I'll tell you how much it weighs. Eight point eight grams. It's a heavy boy. All right. So you've seen the scales just end. Thirty-eight grams. His length, the final length, come out to be exactly seventy millimeters. Um, the width come out to be thirty-five millimeters. Uh, wing tip to wing tips, one hundred and forty. So he's, a, he's a pretty big lure, pretty big for around here anyway. Now guys, it's going to wrap this one up. Probably won't get a chance to go fishing for another week with all this floodwaters around, but when I do get a chance, I'll take him out and give him a throw. Hopefully I can entice something. Alright, see you on the next one. Catches.